Savior Jesus Christ, Pastor Jay, and welcome to Chapel Crest Baptist Church located at 2629 Morrell Avenue here in the city of Dallas, Texas. We are so excited to have you once again for our Wednesday night Bible study, Pathways to Spiritual Understanding. If you're able to come and be with us in person, we'd love to have you. But just in case you can, you can tune in every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live and YouTube. Also, visit with us on Sunday morning here at Chapel Crest at 11 a.m. for an awesome worship experience. Now, let's get ready for the Word of God. God bless you. Enjoy Bible study. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study, Pathways to Spiritual Understanding. I am so grateful to see all of you out tonight, and I also like to welcome our viewers on YouTube and Facebook. Thank you all for tuning in with us on this fabulous Wednesday night. And I want to ask our congregation, how many of y'all know today is a great day to be alive? Amen. Amen. We give God the praise, the glory Amen. for blessing us to be here. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, tonight we thank you for another opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. I pray, dear God, that you would keep me humble enough to know that teaching does not come from me. It comes through me. Use me to rightly divide the word of truth that we may leave here in better shape than that in which we came. Have that own way tonight. We need you to feed us from on high. We thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. On tonight, we're going to continue our walk through uh, with the natural man as we begin to move toward the spiritual man. And we learned a lot the last few weeks when it comes to the natural man and how the natural man needs to die daily of himself that he may begin to take on the image of Christ. Are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. It's important, ladies and gentlemen, that the world see less of you and more of Christ. And seeing Christ doesn't mean you got to walk around and announce it. They should see it in our lifestyle. It ought to be something about us that the world knows that we are children of the Most High. Glory to God. All right, begin Minister Parker reading Roman number number six. We're going to back up and get a running start to get down to B. All right, let's begin with Roman number number six, kind of refreshing where we left off on last week. Go ahead, sister. Why should some still in the natural state? Okay, you in the wrong spot. The top of page five. It is difficult to understand. Okay, you don't want the title. No, I know. Just, just come down to it. Okay. The... It's difficult to understand, but many people don't prepare to meet God for various reasons. On last week, I asked you all, what does that word prepare mean? Somebody tell me again. When it says you've got to be prepared, what does that mean? Ready, ladies and gentlemen, to meet Jesus Christ. How do we get ready to be able to meet God for ourselves? What is the preparation part? Somebody talk back to me. How do we prepare? Study. Study. Study the word. Be obedient. That's number one. The first step to being ready to meet him is first of all, you got to accept Christ into your heart as your personal Savior. Right. That's number one. To be what? Born again. Mm -hmm. Reading the word, studying the word, all of that comes after the new birth. You can't meet him or be ready. Well, let me change that. Let me change that. You're going to meet him one way or the other. All right. right, <laughs> right. Let, let, me, let me get that part right. There's going to be a day, isn't that right, Deacon Dora? We're going to meet him whether we want to or not. But make sure that when you meet him, you have prepared to meet him and be with him eternally for the rest of your life. When this fragile body returns to dirt from the dust in which it came, I want to make sure that I'm living in the presence of the Almighty God. That is our ultimate goal as believers. Are y'all with me? 
Keep reading, please. There are several. There are several categories of people found in the ranks of the natural man. All right. One. Number one. Some won't be saved because they neglect their neglectors. Okay. Somebody give me the definition of neglectors. What does it mean to be a neglector? Somebody. Ignore. Ignore. Can I give y'all another word? Procrastinate. Y'all know what? Y'all know. How many of y'all procrastinate sometimes? Man, really? <laughs> I thought I was the only one. Better say amen. Okay, okay, all right. Number two, B. A. A. Hebrews 2 through 3 asks a great question of all who are neglectors. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Keep going. B. It has been said. The road to hell is paved with the stone of procrastination. The road to hell is paved, which simply suggests that some people have the attitude, Minister Parker, I got time. Mm -hmm. Let us all say amen. amen. That is one of the biggest procrastinations that we have is we simply say, I got time. That is one of the biggest mistakes that you can ever make in life is to put off today for tomorrow or whatever that thing says. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Uh -huh. Amen. So we got to get ready right now. There's no guarantee that there is going to be a tomorrow. Glory to God. And everybody may not have the opportunity like the thief on the cross had. At all. Are y'all in here with me? Amen. Y'all remember the fellow on the cross who said, remember me and this day you'll be. We may not get to that point. Mm -hmm. So therefore, preparation begins right now. Right. As we make a commitment that we're going to give our hearts and our soul totally to Christ. Have you really made that, that commitment? Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Keep going, please. Number two. Some. Some won't be saved because they're rejected. And I remember last week I asked y'all the question. Everybody in here raised their hand, yes, that we don't like rejection. Y'all remember we talked about that last week. We don't want like rejection. Let us say amen. What a tragedy it would be when we get to that point of meeting the Savior and he rejects us. Mm. Because he doesn't know you. Come on, talk back to him. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. All right. A. Many go about trying to establish their own righteousness uh -huh. and feel they are good enough to go to heaven as they are. Feel that they're good enough. How do we establish? I really want y'all to really think about this and talk back to me, class. How does an individual establish what they consider their own righteousness? Because they feel like they... They take care of the homeless. They feel like they give and they do. They they stay uh, on time for work. They don't cuss. They don't drink. But that that's not the righteousness. Anybody else want to answer that? Look like you think it. <laughs> yeah, along those same lines, yeah, we uh, you believe that your goodness is good, good enough evening. when you do good things. Uh, how can God reject you if? Uh, you've done all these good things. Mm -hmm. So in other words, they believed that their good works would save them. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And there are a lot of people, ladies and gentlemen, do good things. Glory to God. It is a good thing to do good things. But that won't save you. Y'all agree with me? Yeah. And let me take it a little bit further. Just because your name is on the Chapel Crest roll doesn't mean you have the rights to the true life. That's right. Hello, somebody. Yeah, right. Amen. It doesn't mean that. Glory to God. The salvation, and I spoke about it on last week, it is not passed down through generation. You got to know the Lord and save you for yourself. Are y'all with me? All right, y'all kind of quiet today. Y'all tired? Come on, talk back to me. Hey, man, I'm going to keep y'all here till 9 o'clock. Y'all better say something. <laughs> Amen. All right, pick up at uh, B. Uh, Shayla, for me, please. They reject Christ as the way to forgiveness of sins, 
and will die still in the natural or unsaved state. Boy, that sounds scary, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. To reject Christ and the forgiveness of sin mm -hmm. and die in the natural state? Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Thank God that we who are believers have been acknowledged of Christ as our Savior. If you didn't know him, glory to God, because understand, class, at the beginning of this Bible study, we talked about entering to this world in a sinful nature. We were conceived in sin. We were born sinners. Glory to God. And if we had never accepted Christ as our personal Savior, we were going to die the same way we entered into this world. It's a tragedy to go through this life with an opportunity to have Christ as your Savior and reject Him. That's a tragedy. Yeah. Do y'all agree? Amen. Keep reading, please. Some won't be saved because they're mockers. What is a mocker? They make fun of. Make fun of. Make some fun of. Make fun of. Okay, now give me a biblical example of mockery in the Bible. And man, if y'all don't get this right, when they, when they Man, you own it, bud. Y'all remember they tried to, they were they, they making a mockery of him. Y'all remember? They was in the foot uh, shooting dice for his clothes and everything else. Come on, talk back to me. Y'all remember that, don't you? They was hurling insults at him. You saved or you did all it. Come down, save I mean, they really made a mockery out of the Savior. Let us say amen. You are absolutely right, Deacon uh, uh, Curtis. Keep going, please. Mockers despise and make light of the Bible's plans for man's salvation. B. The Apostle Paul had mockers in a crowd to whom he was preaching. In Acts 17 and 33, 72. Let's go to the Word of God, please. Open up your Bibles. Open up your Bibles. How many of y'all remember? The Apostle Paul. Amen. Anybody know anything about the Apostle Paul? Let me give you some history of the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul was a tent maker. How many of y'all knew that? Amen. Did y'all know that? Amen. He was a tent maker from an area called Tarsus. He made tents for a living. Let us say amen. amen. All right. And the Apostle Paul was one of the most prolific preachers. And he believed and shared the good news even when his own life was in jeopardy. How far are you willing to go to spread the gospel? Okay. What does that passage of scripture say? Read that passage for me, please, uh, Pastor Blake. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, mm -hmm. some mocked, and others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. The gospel was being preached about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And there were those in the crowd who heard the gospel and made mockery of it. Do you know people still do that today? Yes. People still reject Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Mm -hmm. Let us say amen. amen. Aren't you glad you didn't? Yes, sir. Amen. 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 All right, Shayla, you're doing good for a brother. Keep going. Okay. Some won't be saved because they're pretenders. Y'all know what a pretender is? Yeah. What is a pretender, a, Sister Shirley? A phony. A phony, but you <laughs> went straight cut across the grass, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> he cut across the field. A phony, pretenders. Let us say amen. amen. Do you know even at church you got pretenders in church? Amen. Amen. Man, don't get quiet on me now. Amen. There are pretenders attending worship all over this world. Amen. 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 Glory to God. They can now praise you. They can now serve you. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Oh, good God of mine. But are oh, what? Pretenders. Amen. They look the part. Amen. But are you really being redeemed by the blood of the Lamb? Good God Almighty. Keep going, sister. I'm trying my best not to shout in here tonight. Pretenders are those who know they haven't been saved, <laughs> but continue to put on a front. Put on a what? A front. Oh, hold on. We can't fly by that word. Put on a what? A front. All right, y'all. What is a front? Yourself, you know. 
Boy, y'all believe cutting across the field in here tonight. <laughs> Say that one more time, Sister Faith. Pretending, you're something, that you're Pretending not. something that you are not. Pretenders. Let us say amen. amen. Say that again. Actors. Actors. Imposters. Imposters. Mm -hmm. Do y'all know that that actually exists in the modern day church? Amen. Let us say amen. amen. Glory to God. And I promise you, ladies and gentlemen, it will reveal itself in time. Amen. amen. Ah, keep going, please. Of Christianity before others. Mm -hmm. A pretender named Simon is found in Acts chapter 8, verses 9 to 23. He passed himself off before others as a great man mm. of God, when in reality he had never been converted. Had never been what? Converted. converted. Amen. Changed. Amen. Changed. Transformed. But there are some people who can come off as though. We have this great Christianity about ourselves and can be convincing to others in order to fit in. Mm. Let us say amen. amen. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever you do, don't be a pretender. All right? The natural man, a pretender, okay? B, we finally got to B. This is where we should pick up today. B. All right, keep reading, please, daughter. The natural man does not have Christ as his Savior. Okay. The natural man has no spiritual life. No spiritual life. The natural man has no spiritual life. Now, in a nutshell, what do we learn from what we just read? What do we learn from what we just read, class? They have no spiritual connection to the Lord, to God. They're the Anybody else? The natural man has no what? Spiritual life. What does that mean? He has not been born again. Has not been born again. No divine connection. Won't go to heaven. Won't go to heaven. Does not believe. Man, y'all on it tonight. All of this has to do with an individual who is not spiritual. Let us say amen. amen. Quoting scripture. Hello, somebody. Mm. Shout on Sunday morning. Don't make you spiritual. At all. Woo! Good God Almighty. If you have not yet been born again. Amen. Born again means recreated. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Nicodemus said, well, how can an old man go into his mother's womb and be born again? That which is flesh is flesh. I'm in the Bible. That which is spirit is spirit. You must be born of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Ah, keep going, please. I think I just saw that. Unless you're born again. Read that, too. Unless he is born again, he will never see heaven. He will never see heaven. The first thing we need to establish, ladies and gentlemen, and we did this on last week, Pastor Blake, heaven is real. Wow. And I think, Sister Sherilyn, you said so as hell. is what? Real. That's right. Let us say amen. amen. Now, it's a good thing to know about both of them. Yes, if you know about both of them, then you ought to be wise enough to make the right choice. Amen. You would think. Do y'all agree with me? Amen. amen. So heaven is real. Glory to God. I ain't trying to get there today. I ain't trying to get there tomorrow. But when my day comes, I'll be glad to go. And I promise y'all ain't trying to get back here. Are y'all with me? Yeah, yeah. All right. Keep going. Second Corinthians chapter 6 verses 2 says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Now is the day of salvation. One of the biggest mistakes that I have made in my younger days as a pastor was going to a church, Deacon Curtis, and assume that everybody in there is saved. Mm -hmm. All right. That is a bad assumption. Yeah. Let us say amen. amen. Because you would think that a person in church ought to have the church in them. 
You would think that. You would think a person that's been in here for the last 39 years, come on, talk back to me. Amen. At some point, they have accepted Christ into their heart as our personal Savior. You can't take that for granted nowadays. But I am not the judge on whether or not you have been saved. That's between you and God. But you better make sure he is the anchor of your soul. You better make sure you have a personal relationship with him. But remember, at the beginning of this class, we talked about life is just like a vapor. Here a minute, gone a minute. If you took your last breath today, can you go to heaven? Is there any doubt? If you really don't know, don't leave here unsure. But understand, ladies and gentlemen, it has nothing to do with your church membership or your baptism. It's a personal relationship with God based on Romans 10 and 9. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart, God has raised this son from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. If you have not made that confession, tonight is a good night to do it. Sure. Salvation has no age on it. Are y'all with me? Amen. It's never too late to accept Christ into your heart as your personal Savior. And every day I walk into the Chapel Crest Church until the Lord takes me home, I want to make sure that everybody is saved. Amen. At the end of the day, God holds me accountable for where you are. Amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. And I take it what? Seriously. Accountability. I take it very serious. Let us say, man, God has trusted me with your souls. Amen. And I'm less of a pastor not to make sure that I try to point home about salvation. Are y'all with me? Amen. I don't know y'all. I'm getting to know you. And I need to know, are you saved? At the end of the day, that's our purpose of being here. Amen? Yes, we come to worship him. Yes, we come to express our praise to him. Yes, we come to lift him up. Yes, we come to magnify him. But at the end of the day, it's about salvation. Where you will spend eternity. Are y'all with me? And I want y'all to know, ladies and gentlemen, it is going to be an eternity. Amen. Because I read the other day, and y'all read with me, that this old body is going to go back to the ground. But that soul and that spirit lives forever. Yeah, yeah. Are y'all with me? Amen. Glory to God. Keep going. The life of the natural man may end at any moment. End where? At any moment. At any moment. Which suggests, help me Shayla, help me Terrence, if I'm reading that right, you don't know when that moment is. Right. Huh? Is that what that means? Yes. I don't know what, when that moment is. I can leave here and that moment can be today. Am I prepared? Are you prepared? Amen. Let us say amen. amen. I'll never forget a good friend of mine, Pastor Brogdon Cousins in California, had a deacon singing a song in the choir. Precious Lord, take my hand. I'll never forget it. Sit down in the choir stand and die. Right there. That moment happened right in church. Are y'all with me? Amen. Pastor, Oakland, California, never forget it, preaching at the end of his sermon, sit in the chair and die. After preaching the gospel, that moment happened right there. Let us say amen. amen. And here's the question of the day, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready for your moment? <laughs> I'm going to preach that one Sunday. That sounds good to me. Are you ready for your moment? Good God Almighty, don't preach it before I do, please. <laughs> I like that one, Mr. Park. I like it. Are you ready for your moment? Go and take God. Mm -hmm. Keep going, please. It's imperative that you see this great salvation uh -huh. freely through Christ Jesus and without delay choose to trust him as your Lord. Without and delay. Without delay, which means stop putting it off. Have you ever put something off and it came to hurt you later? Yeah. Let us say amen. Yes. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. One of the biggest things I put off here not too long ago, uh, Dick and Dora, and I'll never forget it. I knew the brakes were getting kind of swelled a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I kept putting it off. 
I kept putting off. Come on, talk back to me. Mm -hmm. Sister Shayla, it went from a braid job to a roar job. Mm -hmm. It went from $39.95 to a whole bunch of more money. Why? Because I kept doing what? Putting it off. I'm out on the one. Come on, talk back to me. We put stuff off that can come back and hurt us on down the road. And one of the biggest things that we do as men is put off our health. Y'all get quiet, brother. That, that was a sign. <laughs> but it's real. We know we need to go get checked out. We know we need to do something about it, but we keep putting it off. And it gets worse by the day because we didn't address it when there was a small problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Glory to God. Ah. Where you at, my sister? I'm done about D. D. In so doing, you'll move from the category of the natural man into the category of the spiritual man and be ready to grow in this wonderful new life. Okay, now I want y'all to see something that she just read. It's very important that we understand this and apply it to our personal lives. And that is the word grow. Highlight it and underline it. The word grow. The word says grow. Let us say amen. amen. Glory to God. Man, this is getting good to me. This is getting good to me. Listen, ladies and gentlemen. You're not at that same size that you entered into this world. How I many y'all agree with me? Amen. You didn't come out of your mom's womb grown. Not at all. She. <laughs> she might have thought it was a lot bigger. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And that's why Nicodemus was tripping about going back mm. into my mother's womb because he could not get this spiritual burn. Y'all remember the conversation, don't you? Mm, yes. I'm too old. Can I go back? Let us say amen. amen. Which means when he came into this world and where we are now, we grew to where we are. Mm -hmm. Amen. In the day we enter into the world, our death march to the grave begun that same day. I hope I'm helping us in here tonight. Amen. Amen. So therefore, just like the natural man, you've got to also grow spiritually. Ladies and gentlemen, you all not be where you were two years ago spiritually. Yes. Amen. That's true. Glory to God. And one of the biggest mistakes we make is we want to blame where we are spiritually on our spiritual leaders. When the word of God says, study to show yourself. Which means you got to have a desire to want to grow spiritual. Yes. I can come in here and labor till I can hardly walk out of here. But if you don't do something yourself, am I helping us here tonight? Yes. Glory to God. And I share this all the time. A Sunday morning sermon is not enough. you got to study the word of God for yourself. And the reason being, it is your spiritual nourishment. Everybody say spiritual nourishment. Spiritual Listen, ladies and gentlemen, what happens if you don't eat? Huh? Huh? Start a day. Start a day? You get hangry. The, the first thing you're going to do, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to get an attitude. Okay. <laughs> attitude is going to sit in first. Okay. <laughs> Amen. But eventually, you're going to have to put something in that body for physical nourishment. Yeah, yeah. Do y'all agree? Yeah. Same thing, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to your spiritual diet. You've got to get a good nutritional diet spiritually. Yeah. Amen. For the Word of God says, help me, Holy Spirit, faith comes by hearing. If you don't hear it, you will not grow to what you don't hear. Are y'all with me? And I want to tell y'all something. Y'all got to get this. If the Spirit of God works with me tonight, help me hold the Spirit. Hearing the Word of God is not necessarily from a preacher or a teacher. Help us, Pastor Johnson. The Word of God is alive. It's God-breathed. Everybody say God-breathed. God. -breathed. God. 
Do y'all hear what I'm saying? In the beginning was the word, the word was God, the word was with God, help me, Holy Spirit. Which simply suggests when you pick it up, you're talking to God. Don't you know when you read your Bible, you are actually talking to God? Because the word of God is God breathed. Man, that's heavy, y'all. If I don't say nothing else tonight, I'm getting happy myself. Ah, the word of God is God breathed. Help me, Holy Spirit, which means the word of God is alive. Do y'all see that? It's alive. How do I know it's alive? How you ever been going through? And you read the word of God, it is almost like it's talking to you. Mm -hmm. It gives you real assurance. It gives you comfort. Mm -hmm. Are y'all there with me? Why? It's God talking to you. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, it is imperative as believers that we pick it up and we read it and digest it into our systems. Are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. But we don't want to just be hearers of the word. The word of God said we must be what? Doors. We simply suggest, Minister Parker, we got to apply what we read. Mm -hmm. Y'all in here with me? Right. God has blessed your pastor with a phenomenal gift of biblical memory. It fascinates me every time I stand in that pulpit and I've never written a sermon before. I get fascinated with it. But here's the thing about it, Sister Sherilyn. If I don't study, ain't nothing going to come out. That's right, <laughs> I don't care how gifted I think I am. I better put something in. And y'all going to leave here on Sunday morning and say, man, Pastor missed it today. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Curtis going to be the first one talking about it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the Rev studied last night. He didn't study all week. Let us say amen. amen. And Deacon Durham said, well, he might get it right next Sunday. Let us say amen. <laughs> but what I'm trying to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I must study the word to feed you. Yeah. I gotta spend time in it. Help me hold the spirit. Mm -hmm. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta cut off the TV. I gotta spend time in the Word of God. If I'm gonna come here and feed you a meal every Sunday, I gotta spend time. I gotta spend time in prayer. I gotta talk to God. I gotta listen to God. I gotta hear God. Amen. Amen. That I may feed you what He told me to feed you, and not what I want to do. Exactly. That's a big difference. Exactly. Let us say Amen. Amen. And every time I come to that pulpit, I promise y'all, I'm going to preach the gospel. Not Kevin Johnson's version, but God's version. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm proud of that. Y'all say amen. amen. Y'all got a pastor who believe in preparation. Amen. Let us say amen. Where are we at? Page number six? Mm -hmm. All right. Summary. Man, and I'm gonna, we're going we're gonna to ask some questions. Y'all see them questions down there? Mm -hmm. I hope y'all ready. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Sister Cheryl been bragging. She's been studying. We're going to see in a minute. <laughs> Oh, okay, now, there you go. It's coming out now, y'all. Amen. All right, um, Minister Blake, re read our summary. The purpose, the purpose of this lesson has been to study man in his natural state. Mm -hmm. That is, the way he enters the world through natural birth. Jesus said in John 3, 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is And I talked about a moment ago. That's a conversation of Nicodemus in the wee hours of the night. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. That's that conversation that Nicodemus had. Continue, my sister. The Lord was teaching us that there is a natural birth that takes place when we're born of the flesh into the family of man. Okay, we were born natural. That was a natural. We came into this world naturally carnal sinners. Amen. I know you don't want to accept it. Some of us sit on these pews say, I wasn't a sinner. Yes, you was. <laughs> Let us say amen. As cute as you was, you're still a sinner. Keep going. Likewise, there is a spiritual birth that takes place when one is born the second time. Okay, there is a spiritual birth that takes place. Think of Carnell. That simply tells us. I want y'all to watch this, ladies and gentlemen. When you are born of the Spirit, amen, Holy Spirit, that means that you are beginning to transform your life into the image of Christ. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. You are a new creation. 
Are y'all with me? Now look, if you sin for 30 and 40 years and get saved, that sin for nature ain't going to die the same day. Man, don't get quiet on me now. Amen. 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 You was born again. You was gone ho about your salvation. You came out of that baptism of pool. You was excited. Amen. But you still had a sin for nature. Mm -hmm. Do y'all agree with me? Amen. Why? Because you cultivated that nature for 20 and 30 and 40 years. That was you. That was your lifestyle. That was your disposition. That was your makeup. That was your character. That's who you were. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, you got to replace the old you with something else. Y'all agree with me? Mm -hmm. Amen. What do you replace it with? Class? Holy Spirit. Oh, I like that. What else? The Word of God. The Word of God. Amen. But you can't, you can't, you can't replace it with a snack. Oh, no. <laughs> Are y'all with me? Amen. You can't do what? Okay. Can't replace it with a snack. High blood pressure, diabetes didn't come into you at birth. That was some things that you never stopped doing that led to that. Do y'all agree? Yeah. But that don't mean you got to stay where you are. You can reverse it by having a committed heart to do things differently. Amen. It begins with a commitment. Glory to God. But I'm telling y'all right now, to get rid of that natural man, it ain't easy. No. <laughs> y'all might as well say amen. amen. We talked about it in Sunday school. Y'all y'all think I'll be listening in Sunday school. Mm -hmm. It came up the other day in Sunday school. Hello, somebody. And I remember very clearly, if you say you don't ever see it, you're a liar and the truth ain't in you. Now, didn't we talk about that Sunday, Dick Durham? Amen. Amen. I know we did. I was here. <laughs> amen. And I paid attention, y'all. Let us say amen. 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 So everybody in here got a sinful nature. It's there. It ain't mysteriously, magically went away. It ain't as bad as you used to be, thank God. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but we got to continually what? Chip away at it every day. You got to continually cut it off every day. By doing what? Feeding yourself the word of God. Every chance you get, feed yourself the word of God. And ladies and gentlemen, you got to have a prayer line. Amen. 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 I'm very suspicious of a believer they don't have a prayer life. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. Because Jesus Christ is your communication line to the Father. Y'all see that? Why? Because God doesn't look at sin and we are sinful. So therefore, we need somebody in between us to take our request to God. Because you can't go to God yourself. Yeah, yeah. You need Jesus Christ. Let us say amen. Amen. That's why the word of God teaches us in the name of Jesus. Man, y'all should have shouted right there. Amen. Knowing that I got a Savior who would take my request to God. But because of my sin for nature, God didn't even look at sin. Y'all remember his son on the cross? Amen. When he started taking on the sins of me and, and Deacon Curtis, that was a lot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. We start taking on all of our sin, God wouldn't even look at it. He said, that was too much. It was just two of us. Mm. Now, just think about the whole world. Mm. Ah, are we learning something here tonight? Amen. Hey, where are you at, sister? I'm at uh, the natural man is without. Uh-huh. The natural man is without Christ uh -huh. as his Savior, and therefore has no indwelling. Uh, underline, highlight the word indwelling. 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 In the welling. Everybody say in the welling. In the Let us say amen. All right. Let's look at it from a different perspective, a different word. What does it mean to dwell? To live in, to be in present. Okay. All right. You can look at your home as your dwelling place. Do you agree? Okay. I want y'all to, to stay with me. Amen. That is what? Your dwelling place. 
How many of y'all have driven down the road and you saw once a vibrant dwelling place is not empty and condemned? Mm -hmm. No life. Come on, talk back to me. It has died, which once was vibrant. It was once thriving. Are y'all with me? But now it has no life. Ladies and gentlemen, the word of God says he will not dwell in an unclean temple. Which simply suggests that we got to be swept clean in order for the spirit of God to dwell there. He wants to live there. He wants to be there. Okay? But don't fool yourself. You lying if you say you're walking around in the spirit every day all day. <laughs> amen. You couldn't even handle it. Let us say amen. amen. Glory to God. But you want to be spirit led. When you make choices, you want to pray that the spirit of God will lead you through that choice. Are you with me? And when you have a relationship with him and you know his voice, help me hold the spirit, you will listen to him when he's helping you with those choices. Are y'all with me? Right. How many of y'all know he will speak to your inner being? Amen. Amen. Some of y'all, don't he talk to you? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And you do know it's his voice. Amen. Yeah. Let us say Amen. But rest assured, the closer you get to him, and the more you develop that relationship, that other voice is going to always try to show up. Are y'all with me? Amen. Word of God says, no matter how you try to do good, that evil is going to always be present. Trying to get you to go wrong when you know you ought to go right. And that's why it's important for you to build a relationship so you can recognize the voice of God when he's speaking to you. Amen. And ladies and gentlemen, he will talk to you. Amen. Amen. Well, yeah, it's natural that a natural man doesn't understand the Bible. Right, go there. It's normal. It's normal. Uh -huh. It's normal that the natural man doesn't understand the Bible or matters of doctrine. Okay, now, how many of y'all, when you first came into your relationship with the Lord, that King James Version was challenging. Amen. Yeah. Some of them words, y'all might as well say amen. amen. Glory to God. Amen. Listen, I've been to seminary and I still can't pronounce some of them. <laughs> because some of them can be challenging. Mm -hmm. But having knowledge of the word and what the word of God is telling you means that you have to be connected to the spiritual source. Let us say amen. amen. Ladies and gentlemen, you ain't going to know what to say if you don't pick it up. That's right. When you leave here tonight, you got from Wednesday all the way to Sunday. Don't wait for Sunday to pick up the word. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Don't wait to Sunday to come to Sunday school just to hear somebody teach. You ain't studying it. Have a look at it. Having gone over it, amen. let us say amen. amen. And Deacon can come over here and tell y'all the cow jumped over the moon and you go to shout. <laughs> amen. But it ain't in the word. Are y'all with me? Amen. Glory to God. Keep going, sister. These things are alien to his nature. Alien to his nature. Y'all know what that means? It means it's foreign. Everybody say foreign. Foreign. Okay. It takes the new birth and the indwelling spirit to begin uh, to, success, uh, to be successful in the study of the word. It takes the indwelling and the new birth to be successful in the study of the word of God. I want y'all to hear what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Which simply suggests, Minister Parker, I want y'all to hear this. I have no more advantage on the word than you do. Are y'all with me? Amen. Just like I can stand here on Sundays and expound on the word, you have been equipped to do the same thing. But you can't if you don't study. Amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. Your style may be different. You may not have the biblical memory that I do, but you can't feed people the word if you study it. 
Just like my deacons and my ministers, like y'all get up here and expound on the Sunday school on Sunday morning. You couldn't do that if you hadn't picked up that Sunday school book. Yeah. I don't care how much spirit you got. <laughs> Are y'all in here with me? Yeah. Glory to God. If you ain't picking it up, ain't nothing going to come out. Glory to God. You're going to fumble and stumble your way through. Glory to God. I was talking to a pastor friend of mine a few days ago, and we were talking about pastors and sermon preparation and being prepared to preach the word of God every single week. It ain't like you don't know you got to preach next Sunday. Let us say amen. amen. Glory to God. And when I leave here on Sundays after emptying myself, come Monday, I'm already refueling. Refueling. Because mm -hmm. I know I got to share the word again on next Sunday. Mm -hmm. But I can't wait to Friday night. <laughs> Let us say amen. 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 And, and uh, I was talking with Terrence. He was at the house a moment ago. And I've already given him my sermon topic and my scripture already. Because I'm already mentally and spiritually prepared to preach to you on Sunday morning. And today is just Wednesday. Amen. But I had to do what? Prepare. Y'all see that? All right. Which means, again, spiritually, I had to study. To show myself approved. All right. Let's get down to these questions. Because I'm going to see if my sister Cheryl had really told me she, oh look at her she over there showing out let us say <laughs> alright let's do question number one Deacon Durham read question number one and if you can answer it answer it number one what's a simple yet concise definition of life okay life is having breath in your body able to move you have Consciousness of being. Oh, uh, <laughs> you're alive. <laughs> hey, man. That is the definition. Y'all make sure y'all write it down here, but it's your workbooks. All right, man. He has given us what the definition is of life. All right. Who wants to try number two? Give me a volunteer for number two. Come on, Shayla. You're looking over here at me. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody read number two and answer it if you can. Yeah. Why is it so important to know that God is the creator of all life? Why is that important to know that God is the creator of all life? Why is that important for you to know He is? Class? God is the creator and source of everything. Therefore, He deserves our praise. Without Him, there was nothing made that was made. Okay, now give me a short term version. Give me a shorter. Okay, read, read, read. Why is it important to know and convince that God is the creator of all life? Why is it important for you to know that God is the creator of all life? Because there are a lot of people out there who will try to convince you that God was not the creator. Why is it important for you to know that he was? Because uh, God made everything. Why is it important to know that? Y'all, I need for y'all to hear the question. Well, the worship is, you know, be thankful to. Because if you don't know, then you'll believe the lie. Oh. He'll, he'll take it. <laughs> wow, man, I love it when y'all think. It just it just gives me chills. Let us say amen. That's what we're here for, is to think. Y'all with me? Okay. Number three. Read number three for me, Deacon Curtis. What does the Bible mean when it says God made man in his image? Okay. Now, we studied that about two or three weeks ago. What does it mean when God made man in his image? Go ahead. No, I want you. Uh, it means that uh, God uh, created us uh, in, 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 with a spiritual, with, in the spiritual image, you know, not physical, but spiritual. Man, I knew he was going to be on it. Amen. Anybody else want to add to that? Good job. Anybody want to add to that? Okay. So we're in his image. We're in his image. Now, I also understand, ladies and gentlemen, that when God created the first Adam in the Garden of Eden, sin had not entered into the world. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. 
Okay? And so the image and the likeness of God was not physically, not looking like God, because nobody has seen God but the Son. Make sure we got this. Amen. Amen. And so, and so from the natural point, amen, he created us in his image spiritually. Because what? We didn't know sin. Sin had not yet entered into the world, so therefore it wasn't necessary for the Savior. Jesus Christ was part of the creation when he said, let us make man in our image and our likeness. Christ, the pre-incarnated Christ, in glory, in heaven, with his Father, in the Holy Spirit, made man in his image. Ooh, that's good stuff right there. And man, because of Adam. Brothers, it was Adam. I know y'all don't want to hear it. But they were, don't be looking over that hood, Carnival. It was Adam. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I saw you looking over that emphasis. <laughs> Let it go and walk away, bud. It was Adam. Number four. What does physical life, when does physical life begin? Now, put what it say in parentheses. Be careful. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. When does physical life begin? At conception. At when? Conception. At conception. Let us say amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. Physical life did not begin when you left your mom's womb. It began at conception. How many of y'all agree with that? Amen. amen. All right. Y'all are doing good. Number five. Somebody read it. How can one know that he or she has passed from natural life to spiritual life? Okay, well, first of all, well, first of all, before we get to the evidence, okay, how does one know that has passed from natural to spiritual? How do you know that you made that change? How do you know? You're born again. Born again? A new creature. New creature? Born again? Acceptance. Acceptance Christ into your heart as your personal Savior? Okay, we got that part right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, is there evidence? You change in what you do. You don't. You don't get joy out of the the sinful things that you used to do. Y'all, are y'all agree? Y'all kind of quiet. Change from mortal to immortality. Listen to you, Cardinal. Y'all on it tonight. Y'all see that? So there ought to be some evidence of that change. A new creation. A new creation. Which means you have been made over again. Not physically. Let us say amen. amen. We still got this old broke down bodies we've been carrying along for these last few years. Let us say amen. 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 Medicine Parker barely made it in here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but that don't mean she ain't saved. Amen. Amen. We saved, but that old body, let us say amen. amen. Glory to God. Last night, I think it's about 11.30, quarter to 12. Man, I had to get Sister Johnson to put the massage thing on my elbow. It was hurting so bad. I just woke up in pain. Let us say, man, anybody ever that wake up in pain? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, keep going, y'all. We're almost done. I got seven minutes. Get to number six. Why do the unsaved find the Bible difficult to understand? That ought to be easy one to answer. They're corner minded. Corner mind, spirit discernment, anybody else? Why do unbelievers find the Bible difficult to understand? Listen, it, listen, listen uh, hold, hold your thoughts. I, I see you about to jump out on me, and I like that. Hold your thoughts. Don't y'all know that even sometimes we struggle and we know we say? Right. I think that's what you was on. Right. Sometimes it's just the wording. Just the wording. Yes. But just think <laughs> right. yes. that you are carnal and unsaved. How you gonna understand it? Are y'all in here with me? Amen. 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 It's extremely difficult. And I'm gonna I'm gonna give y'all uh what to call the uh I don't know how do I put this? An easy way to understand it. It's very difficult. To build a relationship with somebody you don't know. Y'all agree? Sure. Let us say amen. How long y'all been married? Over 50 years. 52 years. 52 years? Okay. 
All right? During that 52 year period, you learn about each other every year. You learn something. Y'all agree? Amen. I'm at 40. I learn something every day, every year. We learn. Cardell, I don't know what you want to ask him. He might get in trouble. Okay. <laughs> you learn something, didn't you? Every day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amen. So the fact you learn something, didn't you? Learn, so we, learn to shut up. <laughs> a smart man, okay? But what I'm saying is, you cannot grow in a relationship with God if you don't know Him. Yeah. Do y'all agree with me? Yeah. You can't know Him without going into the Word of God. Right. That builds a relationship. Are y'all with me? Amen. Oh, man. All right. Number seven. Read number seven for me, Deacon Durham. What are some of the things that keep the unsaved from salvation? Oh, that ought to be real easy. It ought to be just one word, sin. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Look at you. Neglect of the protectors. Sister Sherilyn, recreating that word. Y'all see all of that? Because we studied that today, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Pretenders, rejectors. Y'all see all of that? Markers. Markers. Unbelievers. Unbelievers. Sin. Let us say amen. 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 And what, last but not least, is that carnal nature. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just hard to stop. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Can y'all remember, without saying it out loud, one of the most difficult things you had a challenge you had to stop. Can you remember what it was without saying it out? That one thing that was really hard for you to say, man, I got to cut this or loose. Man, yeah. That's the easy one. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's that one thing that you really had to struggle with to let it go. Mm -hmm. Let us say amen. amen. Number eight. What are we told in the Bible about the length of our natural life on earth. What are we told? We've been studying that. What are we told in the Bible about our natural life on earth? Oh, hold up. Hold up. Here it is. Y'all watch this. Here it is. Say it again. Life is it's like a vapor. Life is like a vapor. Now you told us. <laughs> yeah. What did I tell y'all? It is here today and may be gone today. May be gone today. That's what the Bible says. I'm trying to let you know. I'm giving it to you in my terms. But the scripture term says life is like a vapor. And y'all remember when we first started this class a few weeks ago, we talked about if you spray some mist in the air, what happened to it? It evaporates. It disappears. Are y'all with me? And that's just like life. Amen. So right now, ladies and gentlemen, it behooves you to understand that you are in your vapor period. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. We're in our vapor moment. We don't know when it's going to happen. But be prepared. Mm -hmm. When it's gone, it's gone. And when it's gone, it's gone. <laughs> Number nine. What are some of the reasons for the de decrease in man's natural lifespan on earth since his creation? Y'all remember we started out with 900 and something years and it went down to 70? Y'all remember when we talked about that? That was a week ago. And how total how it continually to decrease. Why did lifespan decrease? Sin. 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 One big word. S-I-N. Sin. Are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Last question of the night, number 10. Who's going to win the jackpot? I want y'all to read it. Somebody read it and answer. Number 10, read it, somebody. What should be the main concern of the natural man? Salvation. 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 Amen. Can I add to it? Go ahead. Where you will live eternity. Which ties in with salvation. Let us say amen. amen. Heavenly Father, tonight we thank you for your word. We thank you for the visitation of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, dear God, for using me as a vessel to teach these your people. Keep me humble enough to know, dear God, that I take no credit for what you're doing here at the Chapel Crest Church. 
I thank you for the privilege to be their leader and their pastor. But Heavenly Father, no matter what I do, I must be led by the Spirit. Thank you for the parishioners who made their way out on a Wednesday night to study your word, dear God. They could have stayed at home and watched it on live stream, but yet they wanted to be present tonight. I don't take that lightly. I want to say thank you. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, now bring us back on this Sunday that we may worship you in spirit and in truth. And we'll be so mindful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a great big hand clap of praise tonight. We are done. We are done. We are done for tonight. Uh, I want to thank uh, Shayla for getting to me. Uh, we've had a few people who have joined our church, and I have gotten a list of them, Shayla. I started calling them people. Better say amen. amen. Those who have been missing, those who joined one Sunday, haven't seen them again, your pastor have taken the time to individually call those people. 